Intermittent fasting has been a really useful tool in my toolbox over the past couple years in both dropping body fat and increasing testosterone levels naturally. Now, even in the absence of perfect nutrition and less than ideal sleeping conditions and lifestyle stress situations, like for example, years ago I used to live in New York City and I was sleeping on a couch for a year on 14th Street. While under extreme stress with a venture-funded mobile tech startup, intermittent fasting became my go-to daily form of hitting the button with my physiology, uh, like the, the reset button. Uh, over time, I really believe that IF played a major role in bringing my health from mediocre to very solid. Now, in today's video, we're gonna discuss and explore some different types of IF and how you can use them to lose fat and even increase your T levels naturally. All of the information in today's video, plus much more, can be found in my book, Master Your Tea. Visit MasterYourTea.com for a free digital download of the book. $20 in value, absolutely free for you. So first, let's look at what is intermittent fasting. So intermittent fasting is quite simply abstinence from caloric consumption for a short period of time. So during this fasting period, an individual can consume non-caloric beverages without negatively impacting the fast, but no foods or caloric liquids should be consumed or else the individual leaves the fasted state. Fasting has been used for centuries as a medicinal exercise in humans, and it's a natural response for many animals during times of sickness or healing. So arguing for or against the nature of fasting is not really within the scope of what I'm trying to accomplish here in this video. I instead want to assume that you're already watching this in order to learn more about how to increase your testosterone naturally, and therefore I'll lay out the benefits of IF for doing so. So not only does IF provide a means of lowering your body fat uh, easily, by facilitating a caloric deficit without the negative hormonal side effects or of a calorie restriction or by facilitating some of its own fat burning influence in the absence of a calorie deficit, making body composition or recomposition more effortless, but it also boosts testosterone by influencing expression of keep pituitary and satiety hormones like GnRH, LH, insulin, and leptin. The research on intermittent fasting in the scientific literature is either one, woefully nascent, or two, non applicable to both humans and or us, fitness conscious individuals. Most short-term fasting studies are actually conducted in animals like monkeys, rats, or cows, and are carried out for methodical 48 to 72 hour fast. For our purposes, that's considered a long-term fast, especially because most humans will never undergo a fast over 48 hours. And the results therefore are not really directly applicable to us. Almost all these studies find the suppression of testosterone and an increase in circulating cortisol, as if that was really a surprise. Between 24 to 48 hours of fasting, depending on individual variants, most humans will have an acute stress response to the lack of feeding. Hormones like cortisol, insulin, growth hormone, and testosterone will likely be affected in some way. However, for fasts under 24 hours, the benefits are myriad and this acute stress response is less likely. For example, in obese men, short-term fasting was shown to increase LH production after just an overnight fast. While the LH increase in, in this case did not directly lead to a noticeable increase in T levels in these men, this was just an overnight fast, the increase in LH was still promising enough for the, some of the researchers to perform tests in non-obese men. Now in the non-obese men, the results of the mere overnight short-term fast were staggering. There was a 67% increase in LH response and a 180% increase in testosterone. With this in mind, doing a short-term fast daily may have a profound, almost immediate effect on your endocrine balance, especially because LH pulsing needs to spike regularly in order to have a noticeable effect on your overall T level, something that a regular intermittent daily fast can have a positive effect on. In terms of these results, short-term fasting appears to affect men differently based on their level of body fat, with normal non-obese men seeing a rapid rise in LH, then testosterone following a short fast. However, in the obese men, the rise in LH does not seem to affect testosterone levels, which may be an indication that IF induces a strong enough stress response in this subgroup of men to effectively negate the LH increase before it triggers testosterone production, or because it's not strong enough to overcome the powerful estrogenic influence exerted by that excessive level of body fat. So testosterone has been found to be positively correlated with insulin sensitivity, which also reinforces the idea that body fat levels matter in terms of healthy testosterone levels, with normal and fit body fat levels exhibiting improved insulin sensitivity over overweight and obese individuals. This fact also sheds a bit of light on when we should fast during the day. Now, for years, I've been a proponent of skipping breakfast. Since reading uh, Martin Birkin's work from Lean Gains and realizing that breakfast really was not a physiologically necessary thing, but more of a socially expected ritual, really, I began experimenting with life without my morning sustenance. And boy, dieting got way easier. In Martin's article on leangains.com entitled, Why Does Breakfast Make Me Hungry? 
He sheds a little light on why most semi-fit individuals experience hunger relatively soon after eating breakfast, and why skipping breakfast is indeed preferable for your hormonal functioning, not to mention diet adherence. So the body's circadian cycle has a natural cortisol spike shortly after waking up, and this happens to be the time when a lot of people eat breakfast. With fit or somewhat fit individuals, the insulin spike with the food intake, along with an already high insulin sensitivity, and the high levels of circulating cortisol at this time of day naturally leads to a rapid drop in blood glucose shortly after consumption. The quick and possibly lower than normal blood glucose drop triggers the feeling of that false hunger within minutes to a couple hours after that meal. So by mid-morning, most people are getting hungry again. So by skipping breakfast, you're regulating your blood glucose levels, insulin, and cortisol during the period of the day where they're most likely sensitive to this and can have a profound immediate effect on your body. You're also allowing your body time to burn additional fat for fuel and rid itself of minor toxins before it needs to allocate energy to focus on things like digestion and glycogen synthesis. The hormone leptin is also effectively regulated by intermittent fasting. It's been shown to be inversely correlated with testosterone levels in BMI in men, which means that a regular IF regimen individuals can control yet another hormone that could potentially exert an influence over testosterone production. Leptin is a more popularly known basically for its major role in appetite and energy regulation, but it's also involved in linking energy stores to the reproductive system. Leptin is secreted by the fat cells and plays an important role in reducing food intake and increasing energy expenditure. So recent rodent studies have actually linked leptin to provide a metabolic information to the reproductive system, both in females and in males. In male mice, leptin treatment elevated FSH levels and increased seminal volume. Leptin and testosterone levels are inversely correlated, with a rise in leptin resulting in a fall in testosterone and vice versa. Because of this, males have naturally lower levels of leptin than females. So this gender difference suggests that gonadal steroid hormones may be potent regulators of leptin levels. So because of the added variable of body fat levels being so intricately tied in with both leptin and testosterone levels, it's very difficult to make conclusive statements about the dance between the three of them. Lean men have lower leptin levels, naturally, than overweight men because leptin is secreted from adipocytes. We also know that lowering your body fat in general is one of the easiest ways to naturally increase your testosterone. They're all intricately tied together. Now, intermittent fasting decreases leptin levels during the fast in men and boosts them at refeeding, operating in a peaks and valleys type of fashion. During the fast, leptin also has less power over regulation of the catecholamines, epinephrine and norepinephrine, which has positive implications for fat loss during the fast. Intermittent fasting also increases levels of a hormone called adiponectin, which along with leptin is regulated by adipocytes, though adiponectin levels are inversely correlated with body fat levels, unlike leptin. This increase in adiponectin during the fast helps improve insulin sensitivity. Adiponectin is so powerful, in fact, that it's been shown to reverse insulin resistance in mice. There are three popular methods for intermittent fasting that I recommend. First is the lean gains method, then you got the eat, stop, eat method, and then there's just, just skip breakfast method. Other protocols definitely exist. However, these three are the most realistic. Uh, there's a lot of information about them out on the internet and you can learn different things. So a lot, very few people can or should do things like alternate day fasting or 48 hour fast. For the modern man or woman with a job, kids, family, social obligations, a sane mind, these are all just not viable options. So in this video, I'm gonna recommend that you fast on one of these three protocols. So lean gains is Martin Birkin's style of intermittent fasting, arguably the most popular and well-respected intermittent fasting uh, protocol in the fitness world at least. So he backs up his, his advice with not only solid research, but also with great results from his clients and himself. Uh, he maintains low body fat year round by eating and training on this protocol. Any summary of lean gains is bound to do it in injustice. If you just haven't read the site itself, you should just go read the website. So basically what it does is revolve around a 16 hour fasting window and an eight hour feeding window. It's quite simple. Uh, for more information on DIY solutions in terms of of uh, the protocols that he, have, that he has, I, I think you should just go over and read leangains.com. The next one is called Eat, Stop, Eat, and that's the brainchild of Brad Pilon. He's a proponent of flexible dieting and using intermittent fasting as a tool to make reaching low body fat levels both easy to attain and maintain. Uh, eat, Stop, Eat is also very simple, but at the risk of not doing it justice here, I uh, highly suggest that you just check it out for yourself at eatstopeat.com. In a nutshell though, Eat, Stop, Eat involves two 24-hour fasts per week as a metabolic resets and fat burning stimuli. For example, during a normal week, an individual could eat regularly every day except Wednesday and Saturday, electing instead to undergo a 24 hour fast on those days. If this seems to suit you personally, uh, in terms of your work life schedule, I recommend giving it a shot and just check out uh, more information on his website. So the last one I, I like the best 
Uh, it's just, just skip breakfast. This is the lazy man's method and my protocol of choice. Just skip breakfast. You don't have to think about it, you don't have to obsess about it, it's super easy. And uh, this would be something that's compatible with things like, like the Keno Body programs, uh, any of my programs, anything like that. All you do is don't eat breakfast, you resume eating normally at lunch and dinner. Uh, it takes all the thinking out of it and you can just do it and see if it's something that you like. So most of the times that you'll end, you'll end up really on a schedule similar to the 16-8 protocol, but in this case, you don't have to sit and count down the hours waiting for it to be a certain time before you can eat. That's just dumb. So to wrap up IF, it's a good tool to increase lifestyle flexibility and to potentially boost your testosterone levels naturally. Regular fasting is gonna provide your body with a nice reset and potent fat burning potential, which will, once again, aid in testosterone production and regulation of satiety hormones over time. Now, if you're interested in this uh, information in the video and you wanna learn more about how to naturally increase your testosterone levels, definitely check out my book, Master Your Tea. I'm, I'm uh, giving it away for free as a download over on MasterYourTea.com right now. All you gotta do is go check that out. It's 500 pages, over 500 pages, over 880 references. Uh, everything is backed by science, backed by research. And uh, we cover everything from supplements to nutrition, lifestyle factors, training, and uh, vitamins and minerals and micronutrients. You also get $5 off coupon for Testro X, which is really cool. And uh, if you like this video and you wanna see more like it, just subscribe to my channel. I'll see you on the next video.